No, I right. do like sex. Mm -hmm. You know, I see nothing wrong with that. I like to have sex with my husband. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. He be having to complain all the time. Mr. Nelson, you have brought Mrs. Fuller here in an effort to get $600 a month transitional support for the next three years for a total of $21,600. Before we discuss that request for transitional support, however, Mr. Nelson, tell me a little bit about your marriage and why we're here in divorce court today. All right, well, it's pretty much like this. You know, I'm, I'm the, I guess I could say I'm like the regular kind of guy, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I, I, I stay at home, you know, I cook, I clean, you know what I mean? Like, pick up after myself, of course. Well, well, let me just stop you right here, because cause the adjective you used was wrong. That ain't regular, okay, what I'm saying? That's not regular. It's wonderful that you cook and clean and do all that, but that's not regular, but I'll just go from there. Mr. Nelson, continue. My wife, she isn't, she isn't appreciative of anything that I do, actually. You know what? I'm going to do something special for her. You know, so I, t I, I dim the lights, you know what I mean? So I get the candles ready. I set the table. You know, I got everything, put the mood music on. You know what I mean? So when she comes in the door, it's like, what is all this? Why we got this? Why you using my grandmama dishes? Why you did like, why ain't you got no job? Like, and it's just like, wow, like I'm trying to have I'm a, trying to do something nice yeah, exactly. here. And, and you're Mr. Mrs. Fuller, you seem from what he's telling me, you've got a cooking, cleaning, romancing, and not bad looking fella on your hands. What seems to be the problem? Well, first off, when we first met, you know. He led me to believe, you know, I understood he didn't have a job. Mm -hmm. It's a bad economy. A lot of people don't have a job right, right now. But he bamboozled me. He threw it in and made it seem like he couldn't get a job. He wasn't working right now. He had all these plans to get a job mm -hmm. eventually. He was working on it and everything. But no, it's been three years and he has never gotten a job. And then he going to sit at home all day, every day, and say how he works on the house and cooks dinner. Let me tell you this. We have a studio apartment. So how, 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 it, how much work could it be? How long can it possibly take you to clean up your home every day, all day? And I'm not talking about full course meals when I get home. You know, I have hamburger helper. I don't got a side of vegetables. I don't got dessert. He don't make me a drink. Is the house, is the studio apartment, is it at least clean though? It's clean, but I could clean the studio apartment myself when I got home from work. That's not a big deal, you know? It's not a full time job. I don't need a maid. Yeah, I would and, you, and there are no children. There's no children. So cleaning the studio, apartment and getting dinner you say it's not quite enough of a contribution to the marital so. marital pot mr nelson did you tell her that you said look i want to be a house husband because no, that's the kind of information I, I a woman ought to know her, i didn't tell her that but i mean like you you should like i feel like somebody should catch signs you know what i mean like like when we met we met i was at the bus stop and she was driving <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying. I was at the bus stop. She was driving. She was like on the phone or something with, it, with probably one of her friends or something right, like right. that. Kind of flag her down, like, hey, baby, how you doing? You know, and we kind of took it did from there. Did he flag you down at a bus stop? He did flag me down at a bus stop. I'll give him that. But you know, we was in college. So, I mean, not yeah, everybody has a car. That's, that's a big difference. I yeah. figure once you move on with your life, you know, you aren't always going to be sitting at a bus stop. I mean, it's gotten to the point. It's not even that he's just not a nine to five type of guy. And it's not even like he wants to sit. Like, he's gone to the point where, you know, I guess from getting tired of me fussing at him all the time about needing to get a job, he'll go and get jobs, you know. He'll go and apply to jobs. And by this, I mean he'll pass applications around because I saw him on the way out one day and was looking over the applications. He didn't even fill it out all the way. He left his last name off one. He didn't fill in his high school education. Okay, m m Mr. M so what I got here, now let me see if I can just sum this up. You were trifling and she should have known it. And if she married you when you were trifling, she's got to live with a trifling guy because all the signs were there. For lack of a better word, yeah. Mrs. Fuller, did you fail to see the myriad of red flags that were flying in your face? If by myriad of red flags you mean I met him at a bus stop because back then we lived in two separate apartments mm -hmm. and he did cook dinner and he did say he was going to get a job and he was going to school, you know. Who paid there his no rent red before you? At this point. Who well, paid his rent before you? You said he had an apartment. How do you, how do you manage that? I'm guessing from school loans. I don't know. He's, I'm he guessing. You, listen here. 
You can't marry a man you guessing about how he's paying his I bills. Aware. You I wasn't aware I needed to do know. a background check on the dude. It doesn't take background. How you pay your rent, baby? What it is not a background check. It is a common question. Mr. Nelson, how were you paying your rent? In, you know, in your junk mail, when you check your email, and like Google, it's like an ad from like Google, and they're like, oh, work from home. Right. <laughs> it was like. That's you, you. That's me right there. That's you. Like, all and, that. And that's you me, working from home. That's I'm me work, that paid for the subscription. Because you're not getting up and getting dressed and going somewhere with a boss know. and all I'm, that. You don't roll like nah, that. I'm, Actually, a, I'm my own boss. In this courtroom. But it's, it's a rare event where I see the woman talking about the man not giving her enough sex. I mean, I guess it's a rare occasion, but... But it's I happened mean, today. <laughs> I feel like it's not very rare. I have a normal sex drive, you know? Right. I do like sex, mm -hmm. you know? I see nothing wrong with that. I like to have sex with my husband. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. He'd be having to complain all the time, talking about making excuses. I get home from work, working 10-hour days, get home. He's been home playing video games on Facebook. I feel like when I get home, the least he could do is take care of my sexual needs. He is my husband. It's not like he's doing anything else all day. I finally do get home. He can talk about all type of excuses. I got a headache. I'm tired. My stomach hurts. What are you tired from? You have not done anything all day. Mr. Nelson, I, are you coming up light on the loving? That's, that's, see, now, that's, that's definitely an exaggeration. You know what okay. I mean? Like, what, what's there, the truth? There's one thing, like, you know how I said I was a regular guy? Yeah. Like, and and, and we already established that she, that's incorrect. She says so go that ahead. she has a regular sex drive. Her sex drive is like, she has, like, Energizer Bunny Syndrome. You know what I mean? Like, keep going and, and going, going, and going, and going and going and going and going. Like, when she says when she comes home from work, yes. like, that does, not, that does not mean, like, she came home, like, oh, after a hard day's work. That means, like, I took a 15-minute break, and I'm coming home so we can have sex. Then on my lunch break, I want you to cook for me, and then we can have sex, and I'll go back to work. And then I'm going to take my last 15-minute break, and then we're going to have some more sex because I just love it that much. My husband would shoot people to be in your position. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> he acts like I'm the one that's wrong. And a half the men I know out there would not only not be complaining, but they'd be going to their boy. Do you know what I got going on but, at my but house? Of course, like, that, that's how it started. That's how it started, you know what I mean? I was like, oh, yeah, like, all for it, you know? Because it, it was right? cool, like, you know? But, like, it was like we were... It was on occasion, you know? It was great sex on occasion. On occasion. Then occasion... But you don't want occasions to be every day. Right. I don't want it to be 17,000 times per second. Like, I want it to be... <laughs> like, I, I want it to... To get, give me a rest. Like, I, I'm, I'm human. Like, I'm not Superman. Like, she, she, she I, so I'm sleep, of course. I'm sleep, you know, after a night of sex that we probably just had. You know, so she wakes me up, you know, with the hands in the pants, you know, and that's cool. Like, like, fellas, that's cool, right? That's, everybody feel like that's cool. But 30, 45 minutes, that's cool. Ladies, is that 30, 45 we're minutes? Not we're not taking a survey, I, Mr. Nelson. I'm just, just saying, talk to I'm me. I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just, just saying. saying 30, 45 minutes might be pushing it. All right, so after I'm done, you know, get, get it finished, she's like, oh, babe, let's go take a shower. Uh, so I'm like, okay, you know, I do need to, you know, brush yeah. my shoulders off a little bit. We go get in the shower, and she wants to do it again. So I'm like, you know what? The second time is the charm. You know, maybe I could put it on her good enough the second time, and she won't want it again. No. So we get out the shower. She's like, babe, let's lay the towels down and do it on the towel so we can dry off. I'm like, that's a little much. After that, she wants me to go into the kitchen, cook for her breakfast. I'm talking about pancakes, eggs, bacon, and have sex while I'm doing that. You say in your papers that your wife fails to understand and respect your vision. Could you explain to me what your vision of your life and your marriage truly is? Well, I mean, given the, given the circumstances, you know what I mean? Like, we have, we have a, a very nice life, you know? Like, she goes to work, you know, does her thing. She brings in all the, the money for the bills and different things like that. You know, I go grocery shopping. I clean up. I cook. Pretty much, I'm like the stay-at-home dad. Right. You know what I mean? Which shouldn't we be a... We don't have any kids. But I'm practicing. <laughs> 
I'm practicing, right? It's good practice. And like, if we, we've been getting along fine for three years, you know what I mean? And like, if I was bringing home the bread and she was at home cooking and doing everything that I'm doing right now, I'm then guessing I that- Then I would say I had a really good life too. <laughs> You, I just don't see working. it as, as, as a problem. Like, you know, like, if you look at... Well, you know, it is a problem because you're here. You with me on that? I mean, I do have a job, you know? My job is taking care of her, you know? She comes home... But she says you're not doing it well enough. But I mean, like, because that's... She has very high expectations. She's always throwing it in there like, oh, my ex could do this, my ex could do that. You know what I mean? How do you think that... that that, that hurts my feelings, you know what I mean? Right. Like, I can only take so much of that. Every time, it's always the argument that, oh, somebody else could have done something better. better. You know what I and mean? And you don't want to hear all that. I, I really Are don't. Are you comparing him to, his, to your ex? I'm only comparing him to not even just exes, people in general. I'm comparing him to people uh, who Look, that guy's got a job. Why don't you? <laughs> exactly. I'm comparing him to people who aren't lazy. Laziness is something that I just can't stand. I'm you know, lazy. Like, I understand when people are in hardships. I understand people on rough times. I don't understand laziness. Okay, Mrs. Fuller, what made you decide ultimately that um, you didn't want to be in this marriage anymore? What was the final straw? The final straw was recently, by some miracle, somehow, he finally got a job interview. And, uh -huh. you know, I made sure he was dressed up, like, coaching him, like, they're going to ask you this, you're going to ask you this. I was so excited he finally got a job interview. I don't know how, since he don't fill out applications. But he, so he went, you know, I was excited to hear about it. He got back, and he basically threw it. He told them that he's not the 9 to 5 type guy, and basically just blew the interview. They said, hey, can you work on holidays and on weekends? I'm like, no. <laughs> When divorce court continues, Judge Lynn rules. But first, Judge Lynn gives a rule on life to Wendell. You ought to tell the next woman that you're with that you're not going to work and that sex is only going to be some time and you can't clean anything larger than a studio. If you do all of that and she still wants you, go for it. This is Fuller. Here's, real, here's the problem I have with you. You know, people aren't what they tell you. They are, all, they are what they do. He was doing what he does, which was nothing when you met him. It's nothing now, and it will continue to be nothing because, as he says, this is his vision of life. So you can't pretend it's something other than what it is. And for the life of me, I never understand why people do not sit down and have a conversation about what it is I expect, because you're making a commitment for here on. And you're not going to talk about what it is and what it isn't. Mr. Nelson, you're lazy. <laughs> Laziness is not a vision, it's not a calling, it's not a way of life. Laziness is a character flaw. But what you ought to do is, you ought to tell the next woman that you're with that you're not going to work and that sex is only going to be sometimes and you can't clean anything larger than a studio. If you do all of that and she still wants you, Go for it. But I, I'm a big one for supplying information. Here we go. This is what, listen. Years ago, when they started this uh, alimony thing, it was all based upon the principle that women stay at home and cook and clean and take care of the children, and the men work and bring home the money. Now we have circumstances where, they are, where it is flipped. Uh, I, what I often see, though, in this court is women who are working and cooking and cleaning and taking care of the kids, the guys at home with the PlayStation and the Facebook. And I don't believe transitional support is appropriate under those circumstances. If you're not bringing anything to the table at all, you just kicking back. But that's not what he did. He did do something. Wasn't much, but he did do something. Now, whatever it was that you were doing before you found her to pay your rent, you're going to need to start doing that again. But I'm going to give you a minute. And I just mean a minute <laughs> to get it together. I'm going to award you $500 a month for the next three months. 
Not the 21000 you were looking for, 1500 Give them the $500 a month. All lessons cost money. All stupid, you have to pay for stupid decisions. This was a stupid decision. $500 a month for the next two months, $1,500 in favor of Mr. Nelson. It is so ordered. All rise. Parties may leave the courtroom. You have a sex overdrive, not just a sex drive. Only to you. No, you only could ask to any anybody. man that just was in that courtroom. Well, th those old bags in there, they probably can't... can still do more than you can. I go doubt ahead that. and go find I your little. I highly doubt that. I <laughs> highly doubt that. I mean, I give you the thirty to forty-five. You know what I mean? I just you give can't... me the fifteen to twenty. Don't trip. What, what the lady's is talking about? Yeah. Order, Texas.